All right, welcome back to Music 154. Last class we talked about simple ternary form. Now we're going to talk about compound ternary form. So compound ternary form is really cool because it nests other simple forms into a ternary or three-part fashion. Let's check out what I mean. So here's kind of a visual representation of what compound ternary form looks like. You can see that I got three large sections, A, B, and A. Inside of those large sections, I have fully completed smaller forms. Like I can have a rounded binary or a simple binary or even a simple ternary okay, inside of the A section. It moves to a middle section that's contrasting and then it goes back to the A section. Okay, the same music as before. Could be a large A prime section as well, and you can sort of think about this as these nested forms. All right, I've got an A section, a contrasting B section, and an A section in my first binary form, let's say here, rounded binary. And that's itself an A section. And then I might have an A section and a contrasting B section and an A section in the B section as contrasting. Um, what usually happens, by the way, in the large B sections is say like if the A section is in major mode, the large B section will be in the relative minor or the parallel minor. That's how they achieve the harmonic contrast. Um, and then we'll go back to the A section for the end. Okay, so this is compound ternary form. You have these smaller nested forms that are simple uh, binary or rounded binary or simple ternary and they themselves get grouped up into three back-to-back-to-back -back -back pieces. And they each have their own internal contrasts, and they have their own large contrasts. Okay, so it's a compound ternary form. By way of example, let's see another guitar piece, this time by an Italian master, Ferdinand Carulli. All right, so here's another guitar piece. I'm kind of on a guitar kick lately. And uh, these are sort of classical guitar masters. This one is Ferdinand Carulli. He's an Italian composer. We've listened to the piece and we've done a Roman numeral analysis. Um, there's a couple of details about this analysis that I'll talk to as we get into it a little bit more. But for the first thing I want you to notice is that we have an A section, a large A section, a large B section, and then this was the same thing as before um, in the simple ternary lesson. We have a da capo al fine sign which means that after the B section, we're going to go back to the top, the A section, and we're going to end at the fine. So we've effectively repeated the A section. So we've got a large A section, a large B section, and then a return to the large A section at the end. Inside of these large sections are sections in and of themselves. So our first A section has its own A section, 
and then a B section. Okay, and we are in C major, and it's a full piece in C major. It's a simple binary form right there. You've got an A section and a B section. And then if you go to the larger B section, you have inside of that also an A section and a B section. And this is a simple binary piece in A minor. So you can see now we've got our C major overall tonic, and then we've got our little A minor um, contrasting key. This is the relative minor. And then this is a simple binary form as well. And now we're going to go back to the A section for the last simple binary form. And this is what we call compound ternary form. Okay, so now I've got my sections analyzed. Going to my phrases. My first phrase is four bars long, and I've said IAC here. Now, you might ask yourselves, wait a second, what's going on? This is not a root position 5 going to a root position 1. It's a 5, 6, 5. And you are right. I think this particular piece, because it's a guitar piece, might have a couple of changed rules about this. Um, perhaps they couldn't get all of the notes in, like they wanted to get that leading tone in there, but because you have like a texture where the G, the root of the 5, is, is in the middle voice the whole time, um, I think guitar really you're forced to have three voices only and if your root is in the middle voice you have to have the third in there so that's how they did it because I think that this I mean I normally wouldn't call this an IAC but but because the next phrase is literally the same thing and it ends the section I'm kind of left to tell to say that this must be the the cadence Okay, and these two phrases are so clearly a period to me because they worked. Look, you got two, uh, your first two measure idea, and then you got your cadence. We'll call it a cadence for now. And then the same two measure ideas before. Look, you got the same harmony, the same exact melody, everything. And then another cadence. The first cadence, you can see, kind of ends on an E there in the soprano voice. Like if I'm thinking, is this is three voices: the bass, alto, soprano. It ends on an E. And then in the second time, it ends on a C. That's the tonic. Okay, so I got a PAC. This is an IAC and this is a PAC. In terms of my motivic breakdown, I've labeled um, the first uh, two measure idea with um, motives. And I think that the first motive is a third down in the melody in the soprano. And then the second motive is motive Y, which is a third up. And you'll see what I mean. If you follow the first A section, you got third down, third up, third up, third down. So I'll say X, Y, Y, X, X, Y, X, and then cadence. It's interesting because a motive can literally be two notes, and that's the case here. All right, let's take a look now at the B section. I've got, again, a questionable IAC, but because this is so clearly a period to me, there's two four-bar phrases working together, I'm just going to call that an IAC. And look here, too. This end, this is the end of the piece, and it, it's approached with a 5-6-5 five, five to a 1. So I just think that we have to kind of consider, because this is a guitar piece, and there's only three possible voices, and the middle voice of this 5-6-5 five, five is the root, they had to have the third in there somewhere, so they put it in the bass. But functionally, I mean, it ends the piece, so it has to be a PAC. Going into the two measure ideas, here we have one, five, four, two, and one, six. And then another one, five, six, five, going to one. I'm calling this an IAC because if you see in the melody again, the scale degree three is in the soprano at the moment of the cadence. And then another two measure idea, which is the same as before. And then another cadence. And this time you see the soprano has scale degree one. And if we're following the motives, this is X here in measure nine, X in measure 10, X in 11, X in 12, X in 13, X in 14, X in 15, and then in 16 you have your cadence note. So this motive B is contrasting because it only uses motive X. Y is completely out of the picture, so you get kind of this different, this different vibe. 
All right, so that's our first A section. It is in and of itself a complete, simple binary form. Let's take a look now at this B section. Its A section breaks down periodically as well. So I've got a four bar phrase followed by another four bar phrase. This time, the possibility of labeling this a cadence is much better. So I've got my first two bar phrase, which is an A minor and all tonic and then a 5-7 in root position going to a 1. And you can see that my soprano voice has scale degree 3 in it, so this is an IAC. And then the same exact, the same exact two measure idea returns here from before, so this is giving it this periodic structure. And then a 5-7 and then going to a 1. And this time the cadence in the soprano is on scale degree one. So this is our PAC. So we've got an IAC and then a PAC. This is much more clearly a period. This B section is a little bit confusing. Um, there's no cadence until the eighth measure of it. So until measure 32. So I'm gonna put a big slur over the whole deal. However, if you look, I've got my first two measure idea and my second two measure idea, and then a third two measure idea, which is the same as all of these, and then a cadence. And normally, um, if I have a sentence type structure, I would not have these two two measure ideas labeled off. I'd say it's continuous music. It's continuing for four bars until the cadence. But here it's clearly structured two plus two plus two, and then a cadence for two more. And I might have labeled a cadence here like I had in all the previous sections of this compound ternary form. However, it's impossible for me to label a 1, 6, 4 as any kind of a cadence. So that's where the ambiguity lies, is on this 1, 6, 4 at the end of this phrase. And it kind of forces me to think that, okay, now you've got these E's in the bass the whole way through, just until the very end. Um, going back to the top of my B section, it's A section. Look, you can see you've got mode of X, mode of Y, mode of Y, mode of Y going up, and then mode of X, mode of Y, mode of X, and then the cadence note. It's B section, mode of Y, mode of Y, mode of Y, mode of X, mode of Y, mode of Y, mode of X. Lots of contrast here because of this overall A minor tonic sounding against this C major tonic in the first A section. And when we go back to it, you really feel like you've come back home. All right, let's give it a listen. Another important manifestation of the compound ternary form is what they call minuet and trio. Okay, and this is the minuet that we studied last week. Um, this is Haydn's minuet in C major from his first ever piano sonata. Uh, he likely composed it for his students, um, which is why I like to use it for class because it's very instructional. And um, 
you can see that you've got an A section, a B section, and an A prime section. And the B and the A prime section at the end here are both repeated as a single unit. So this was what we call a rounded binary form example, if you remember. Um, my first A section has a half cadence at the very end of it only. So I called this a periodic structure with its first uh, two measure idea and the second two measure idea and then a con uh, cadential continuation. I labeled mode of X and mode of Y, mode of X being the triplets, right, coming off of a quarter note and then triplets and then mode of Y being two notes, one long, one short. The B section is also, uh, the B section is four bars uh, ending in a half cadence. And I've got two measure idea plus two measure idea. We did this all last week. The B section um, contrasts because we've got, first of all, um, motion towards four, but also because we've got motive X and motive Y more closely combined here. Now, if we look at the A prime section, we got a whole eight bars until the cadence, two measure idea plus two measure idea plus a cadential continuation all the way until the end. Mode of X and mode of Y come back in their normal places. So that's the minuet version of this. Now, the next section is called the trio, and I gave you this for homework. So I'm not gonna do a full analysis of this for you in the video. Um, I'll expect that you have done this and you have sort of a sense of what you think that it is. Um, but just, you can see off the bat that we've got contrast because um, it's in the tonic parallel minor. Okay, so there you have a whole contrast, and this itself is also a kind of a form, a kind of a binary form. Um, whether it's rounded or simple, I leave that to you to decide. But this is the trio section of the same piece. And so now, after this piece is over, which we'll listen to, we go back to the first section, which was the minuet. Now, when this happens, normally they don't do the repeats. So it just goes straight on through to the end. So let's give this whole thing a listen now, the minuet, trio, and then minuet as a compound ternary form made up of individual smaller binary forms.
So up to this point in our exploration of these smaller forms, we've covered pretty much exclusively dance type melodies. Um, now I want to go into something that is definitely a song.
So schematically, that's what this looks like, right? Compound ternary form is three individual pieces of music, really, that are grouped together as an A, a B, and an A section. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the class. If you need to review any of the topics covered so far this semester, you can go back and watch these videos. I'll see you next week.